a great honor and privilege for me to be invited to attend this very important workshop. They say failing to plan, no. Yes. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Yes. Am I right? Yes. So why are you not giving me a round of applause? <laughs> I wish to take this opportunity to warmly welcome you, the Deputy Minister, to Manikalet. I wish also to welcome you warmly, all you uh, ladies and gentlemen. Manikalet is the place to be. I'm sure by now you agree with me. As a province, we do not take your decision to hold this very important review workshop in Mutare for granted. For us, it's a great opportunity. You have brought business here. You are the money people. Because that's what we believe. But we know that is not the position. You are very innocent civil servants that are doing a great job for the country. I've had many friends in your ministry. Most of them, all of them, in fact, appear like Waka Varwana Mayawa Machet. Very quiet, very organized, very cool, very hardworking. And I believe that's what you are all are. <laughs> the workshop is certainly bringing various opportunities to our local business, including this hotel. I'm sure it has benefited a lot. I don't think you are all housed here. I'm sure you are housed elsewhere. And uh, this is uh, what we cherish. The shops, everything will all benefit. Please enjoy your stay in Manikale. I was just whispering to the minister that uh, when is this workshop going to end? I'm told I think it's probably Friday. I said, please, I give everyone here the freedom of the city, the freedom of Manikale. Your workshop, please feel free to go around. The minister was saying, Don't worry, I will make sure they leave on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Honorable David Minister, ladies and gentlemen, I have no doubt that uh, you fully you are fully enjoying our hospitality. And uh, I wish this to continue until the end of your workshop. Uh, what you are doing here is what will make the whole country stand financially. If you don't internally plan and organize yourselves, then the whole country is at risk of disorganization. So I would like to thank the organizers of this very important workshop. I would like to thank, thank the minister himself, the deputy minister, the PEPSEC, and all of you. Please, obrigado, Ziko, Sandy San, Twalimba, Mashuma, I thank you. You can leave your mind. Uh, thank you, Honorable Minister. Another round of pam pam for the Honorable Minister. I think we all hate him. Failure to plan is actually planning to fail. We are here to plan so that uh, we won't fail on our vision 2030. We will achieve it. He so uh, rightfully and he said we are also cool and hardworking. Your faces uh, gives us that story. So make sure it's the reality behind you. Very cool and hardworking. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. Uh, allow me to recognize uh, the Minister of Finance. Um, and the Economic Development and Investment Promotion, uh, Honorable Professor Tumwe. Uh, in absentia, he is uh, hosting the IMF team. He would have wished to be here, but uh, tomorrow we're going to have him uh, for a virtual uh, meeting. Uh, our host minister, um, Advocate Sugata, who is the Minister of State for Manika Land uh, Province, Provincial Affairs and Devolution. Um, I'd also like to recognize the Chief, um, uh, apologies, uh, our Secretary uh, for Finance and Economic Development, uh, Mr. George Gamatanga, who will also be joining us a bit later. We have Chief Directors here present, uh, Directors, Deputy Directors, 
I noticed uh, some heads of um, our state-owned enterprises in here. I advise the Public Service Commission is here, OPC. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a uh, pleasant morning to you all. Um, I'd, I'd like to give my heartfelt and profound gratitude to our host minister, Advocate Ngata, <coughs> for receiving us uh, in, in your province, in the capital uh, of beautiful Manikaland. Um, you would find that the mountainous and, and, and scenery that we have will allow us to get our creative uh, and strategic juices flowing. So we, we, we thank you for that, uh, Honorable Minister, if you can give him a, a round of applause. Um, we understand that uh, you also have uh, another engagement. There's another strategic uh, workshop for Mai Zimbabwe that the Minister has to attend to. So I'll keep my opening remarks quite brisk. Um, but it goes to show how Manikala and Mutara has become the destination of choice for uh, all the firms that want to come and you know, exercise their minds outside of their workstations. So um, kudos to you for raising the profile of your province, Honorable Minister. Um, we are opening this uh, session uh, today, officially, even though we had done some work yesterday. Um, we had the launch of the EGP yesterday in Harare, where the President officially launched what is dubbed the Electronic Government Procurement System, which I'm hoping as, as Ministry of Finance and as Treasury, uh, we've assigned someone uh, as a key stakeholder to ensure that you know, the transparency and accountability in procurement um, has right oversight from all the necessary stakeholders. Uh, while, while I was there, I briefed the Honorable Vice President that I was coming uh, to Ontario for a budget review. Shukanzi, iko kwa kwa Ontario, kwa mwuri kita review ye, mkano bika mboza. Tuku tzoka, eh, pamlo tzoka, no tzika inesi, mkano bika mboza. So, fellow colleagues, I'm beginning to like my job. <laughs> I, I would hope that uh, by, by Friday, um, all the sessions that we had, which is a review of um, the past year and previous years, which output would then take to come up with a strategic plan uh, for the following years, um, is something that is reflective of uh, the accolades that you're given by the Honourable Minister. I think he has defined our team in the Ministry of Finance and in Treasury as probably being the uh, most outstanding of civil servants. I think uh, that is something that you should take pride in. Um, in, in, in our session system, uh, ours as a Minister of Finance needs to stand to more scrutiny. So whatever it is from NDS 1, Vision 2030, um, the micro framework that we came up with, our budget needs to speak to that. Our strategic plan needs to speak to that. Our planning process needs to speak to that. Because ultimately, as the Minister of Finance and as Treasury, we are the custodians and the champions of all these uh, blueprints that we have. So I would hope that we remain cognizant of the micro framework that we, as Treasury, even though today we are the Minister of Finance, came up with. Uh, we would need to challenge ourselves to make sure that we remain in tandem and that these lines, though blurry, uh, still converge into the same thing. I, I apologize, Honorable Minister, we're already getting into our ministry business. Um, but it, it is quite important for you to know what is happening. In this room, you've got the financial engine of the country. So all decisions, uh, monetary-wise or financial-wise, fiscal-wise, uh, are coming out from the beautiful faces that you see here, uh, the very polite, the very well-dressed faces that you see here, uh, uh, the engine uh, that, that's actually around the country. So it is quite um, an important session that we're having here, and it is something that we do not take lightly. Uh, while we will explore our freedoms, we will endeavor to do that after the core business has been taken care of. I thank you, Honorable Minister. I thank you, colleagues. Uh, I look forward to a very fruitful next few days. Thank you.
We may all be seated. Thank you so much. So this week we're having our strategic review and planning our workshop as a ministry. Uh, uh, what we intend to do is to take stock of um, the previous year as we come up with our annual plan, which is going to feed into our budget for next year. Um, now this is tied in with a macro uh, planning session that we had a few weeks ago, uh, which then dovetails into how we as a ministry excluding the treasury function are going to fit into that um, as, as you would appreciate the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Investment Promotion is uh, the champion of our national development strategy um, pushing towards Vision 2030. So we want to make sure that in our planning and our views we are moving in tandem uh, with that and, and become an example for other ministries as well uh, to make sure that as we uh, move through NGS1 in 2025, uh, pushing to NGS2 that's going to end in 2030, uh, we're always in line uh, with that strategy. So what it is is uh, stop taking uh, as we plan to move forward. Um, so uh, who we have here today as our stakeholders are heads of uh, the ministry power status, our uh, OPC president, we have our public service commission, um, who are the main stakeholders in the ministry of finance. So um, initially uh, it is an alignment process on how have we done so far as a ministry in achieving uh, what we set out to achieve. Uh, given that, how are we going to then move forward? Um, so you find that day one yesterday and today, uh, when we officially opened, uh, was a stock taking. Um, from midday today, we'll be going into the strategy. This is when we come back with a, a work plan as to how we then move forward uh, for 2024. And uh, this is a tumble down effect uh, on all the other ministries as well. Again, um, this is uh, the Ministry Strategic Review Meeting, um, somewhat separate from our Treasury function. Uh, for NGS1, uh, there's a midterm review uh, policy document that I'm sure has been published by now. Uh, if one is to review that, you will see that as a country, as a ministry, we've been on course um, in as far as NGS1 is concerned. Uh, so to ensure uh, success, we have to stay on course. Uh, and make sure that um, all the tight uh, policy measures that we had in place uh, continue, of course, up until 2025. And maybe your message to other ministries. Um, we are going into budget season. Uh, I think two things that we need to for, uh, remain cognizant of. Number one is the value for money. Uh, yesterday's Excellency launched uh, the EGP, which is an electronic uh, government procurement system, which uh, will ensure transparency and accountability in all our procurements. Um, I think if we consolidate uh, in those efforts, we'll find that our budgets, while they'll never be enough, um, can push us a bit further. Uh, when the Ministry embarked on the, the Value for Money initiative, uh, we saved over 30% uh, in, in procurement, which is quite a huge saving. So this is something that we'd like our ministries to, to, to look out uh, for as they go through their budget processes.